All right, y'all, we got it all built. Got the flashlight, got the tracer. We're gonna give it a little pop shot. Boom. What's up, y'all? JJ Moore here. <clears throat> Today is going to be a great video. And the reason it's going to be a great video is because, whoa, I love doing HPA builds. And this is an HPA build for a customer at Battalion. And, um, y'all. If you don't know, I work as a tech at Battalion. I'm not going to tell you the customer's name. That's his ticket here. I'll give you his first name. His name's Scott. He wants a Polar Star Tracer Flashlight, Max Hop Up, Speed Trigger, Bucking, and Save All Empty Packages. There we go. So I'm going to slide his little slip under here and I'm going to show y'all what all we got. Polar Star Jack. Max top up. There's our battery. There's his flashlight. Also got a tracer. Also got a trigger. He also got a maple leaf bucking. And a air grip. So there's a few screws we'll put over here. In the bag now. Now wait till you get to see what this is going in. So what I like to do is go ahead and empty out my parts. Oh yeah, so he wants to save all the packages, so we'll go ahead and empty out the parts and we'll put all the packages back in here for him. So, hang on a second and I'll show y'all what it's going in. And I love to do cold star installs. But y'all gonna, y'all, I get so many requests for full Polar Star installs. Because sometimes I just do shorts and short videos for you. And this is gonna be for all of my guys who are trying to put your own Polar Star in and you just can't get it or there's an issue that you don't see that's happening. I'm gonna go step by step and I may not talk the whole time. So I'm going to go step by step at building this full build. I'm going to put it all over here. I don't like everything to my right. I like it to my left. And we're going to do a full out build, step by step, just for y'all. And I was going to do it live, but I wanted to keep the video. That way you guys would be able to have it. And go back and look at it and rewind it. So, we're going to keep right on going, boys and girls. Keep right on going. We're not going to need that, but we're going to put it to the side. And we're going to go ahead and put his tracer on charge. Unfortunately, I don't have tracer BBs to test it until I get to the arena today to work. And here is his flashy lighty. A nice looking flashlight. I love the case, by the way, too. I'm working with gloves right now because I have mechanic hands, which means they are stained from the grease that I worked with all week long on semi trucks. All right, boys and girls, here we go. And almost there, almost there. I'm trying to hurry. Trying to hurry. Wait a minute. Why are we hurrying? We don't need to hurry, do we? Y'all love this stuff. Okay. We're going to take the jack and we're going to set it right there. We're going to take our line, our harness, SCU trigger board, and put it all right there. And we're going to take the box and put that there. Give me a sticker. Everybody asks about the stick. I got about a thousand of them, so there's no need for me to want it. And there we go. Everything's packed up. Go ahead and put the ticket back in there. All right. 
So first we're gonna pop in his battery to his flashlight. I'm not gonna get into too much detail because I know these videos can take some time, so. They are marked positive and negative. Let's see if that's strobe. I don't see strobe, but guess what? If you got fast fingers, you can strobe. That's a nice flashlight, y'all. The Valken X300 Ultra. I'd say that's pretty bright, guys. So we're gonna set that to the side. We're gonna go ahead and get his tracer on fleek. That way it's charging. If I, in fact, have a charge station over here somewhere. That's a good thing if you go to Battalion and you get your replica built by me. It gets the full nine yards. Everything's going to get set up. Okay, I can't charge this right here because if I unplug it, we're going to lose this light right here. And I need this light. So, I will charge this for him. It's just not going to be this particular moment. All right, y'all. Here's the moment you've been waiting for. Well, I don't know if you've been waiting for it, but I have. One of the best platforms to HPA because it's so lightweight. The CM16 Predator. And we're going to go ahead and open the box. Get this bad boy out. And I'm gonna lay it right there for you guys to take a gander at while I set it to the side <coughs> and get comfortable here. Because we're gonna have to pick some pliers up off the floor. <laughs> we're gonna have to get comfortable here. Alright. Who's ready? I know I am. Let's go. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this upper off. That's the first thing I always do. Get it out of the way. I'm gonna take that upper. Normally I'd lay it up here on the table, but I got a bunch of stuff up here today. Next, we're gonna take our stock. We're gonna take it and just squeeze right here. Pull down hard as you can, it's gonna hurt your fingers, and pull it straight off. down to this so we're gonna go ahead and take our rear pin push it out if it doesn't want to move get yourself a rubber hammer give it a little help we're gonna put it over here in our bolts that's where we're at now now we're gonna take our mag release it's a special little itty bitty allen so I'm going to go ahead and locate that one. I think it's up in right here. I'll tell you what size it is once I figure it out. It's a T6 Torx is what I'm using. And on the KWAs, it's actually a little bit smaller. I think it's like a 5.5. So, let's move that up. I'm gonna get the old Polar Star Jack. Some sticky stuff on it. Get the Polar Star Jack up there out of the way. All right. Next, we're gonna take off our grip, which is gonna get a different size Allen. And it's this guy right here. It's going to be a T9 Torx. I, I tend to use Torx for everything because Allen will strip. Torx gets a better grip. Um, a lot of people will tell you, especially mechanics, if you deal with Allens a lot, use a Torx. If, you, if I can't get an Allen out, I will literally drive a Torx bit in it just like you're seeing me do right now. That was really tight. I'm going to have to put it in my lap. <clears throat> that baby right 
right there is tight. Thank you, GNG. I think she may use the fix one again and slip him. You heard that pop? That's how tight it was. But Torx bit grabs the Allen way better than an Allen. If you feel it slipping, I'd go ahead and Torx, get the Torx bit out. <laughs> and that'll save you a lot of aggravation in the long run. I promise you. All right. I'm going to take this stock 18K. What you get. Uh, drop it in his kit. Now we're going to find my drill. And take off the grip. Got two Phillips head grip screws. Down inside. Whoa. <laughs> I totally missed that one. That's funny. Happens when you get old, y'all. You get blind, can't see. Next, you got this pin. There's teeth on this pin, splines. You always look where the splines are, they're on this side, so you're gonna drive it the opposite way out. I use, I have a punch for this, but I use just about anything because it's not really hard when it's in the plastic body gun. If it's in a plastic replica like this, it's going to come right out. You ain't going to have to fight it. Now we're going to get us a long Allen and get that buffer tube off right there. Hang on a second and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Down inside that buffer tube, you're going to get the longest Phillips head you could find. And unscrew it, unscrew it, unscrew it, unscrew it. Until you're tired of unscrewing. Sometimes I use a drill. Then, I'm gonna take this, and we're gonna cut these wire ties right here. Just take them and twist them right off, break them, cut them, whatever you wanna do with them. Now we're gonna unplug this part of, and I just broke it. I just left the plug right out. It happens. Should've probably cut the uh, heat shrink, but it's no biggie. These are made to unplug. Not like the way I just unplugged them, though. But, yeah. So, you take it. If you wanted to reuse this, we're going to be tossing it. But, if you want to reuse it for whatever reason, I don't know why you would want to go back from Polar Star. You just plug it in. Just take these guys right here. Go to the opposite side. And they push right in. And snap. Hang on, I'll show you. It's a little bit harder to do when you got gloves on. Bye-bye gloves. I knew that was going to happen. I knew that wasn't going to take long. Now y'all can see what I really do for a living all the time. These dirty mechanic hands get nasty. I ain't trying to waste a bunch of time on this, but I want to show y'all how these go. <laughs> There's a little tab. Jeez, JJ. I'm just going to put it up to the camera and show you. Right on top of it. Right there's a little tab. You get you a little pick tool and you pull up on that tab. And these will unplug. As you see, I just forced them out of there with a pair of pliers by accident. It's not that it was weak or they were bad. It just, I pulled on them very hard. So I'm not even going to worry with it at this moment because I'm done. That's as far as I'm going with it. Now we're gonna unplug it here, grab it on both sides and pull. And now we're home free. Now we're gonna take off our sling plate, set it to the side. Now we're gonna grab it, pop that out. Boom. Take our body, put it to the side. Put our buffer tube to the side. Take all these stock parts here. We're gonna throw them in the bag for him. Of course, I might have to put the clip on for him in case he decides he wants to use it. Here, we'll put it there so I can put it back in before I stop this video. I'll show y'all how to fix that. But right now, I want to get this done. 
This is the fun part to me. Take out all the screws. You basically are just gonna say bye bye to pretty much everything. Um yeah, pretty much everything. And as you notice right here, it says G and G. That's their warranty seal. So if you don't want to be warranty liable for warranty, don't take that off. We'll take that off in a minute. You know what I mean, guys? Don't be no warranty breakers like me. All right. Now you just grab all your guts. And you grab them. You got to set them to the side. You're going to need that. Spring guide's got to stay. We're going to take our gear set. And we're going to set it. I don't like these greasy gears. So we're going to put them over here so they don't get my mat dirty. I like my little mat. And I don't like it greasy. So he got his own trigger. So we're going to put this trigger to the side for him. Now we're going to take my Phillips. And take out his trigger board. Put a screw there. Take out the cutoff lever. That's what keeps a replica from going full auto whenever you're on semi. Now we're gonna pop up on his ETU and take this right here. Go wet, wet. This is gonna be tough now. You gotta be strong right here. These little clips, they hold the wire down. You gotta get underneath them and give them a little help sometimes. The best advice I could tell you is don't leave it in the gun because what's going to end up happening is it's going to fall into your trigger or something and short it out. So get rid of those things, man. Now we're going to take this wire and peel it out. I don't know what glue they use, but they glue it down with something. Good G and G. Good job. Good job, G and G. Now this is kind of cool here. But this is something that I do to Polar Stars. A lot of folks don't. They just gut them and go. If y'all wonder what I'm doing, I'm saving the shins. Can't remember having enough shins, boys and girls. But I knock out all the bu bushings because you don't want it to fall out when you're playing into your trigger mechanism or anything. So... And you can use these bushings for DSG builds if you like. Since they are still good and brand new. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. This is Polar Star ready. So for one thing, I want to get this out and I want to show y'all how to take this right here and make it it's called a ramp and what the purpose of the ramp is is it gives me a, a soft edge for the trigger board to hit I mean for the selector plate to hit instead of hitting the um I need a flathead instead of hitting the full auto switch and just ramming it on the Polar Star I'll show you when I get it put in there what we're doing is we're putting a ramp on here or a beveled edge and that is going to save it okay let me show you what I'm right here we're gonna bevel the edge right there take this bit right here and then put it in the drill turn the drill wide open and we're gonna go Nice little smooth edge. Now we're gonna reinstall that selector plate. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Y'all see me fighting with right? Trying to be gentle with it, but yet rough. 
that's going to give us what we need. All right, guys. Yes, sir. It's time to drop in the trigger board. All right. Be nice if I had me knife over here. And there it is. Trigger board. Full auto switch. FCU. Get over here on the wood. FCU. All right, ladies and gents. Well, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's showtime. It's showtime. Now we're going to find that little itty bitty screw right there for the T board. Now we're going to take our T board and we're going to make sure that our full auto switch is not going to get knocked right off instantly. So we're going to just kind of baby this in there. We don't want to go stuck on stupid here and force it and break that switch instantly. You feel me? Y'all feel me? Good. Glad we're on the same page everyone. Now we're going to check that. Look at that beautiful flow of the switch. Otherwise, this could have went real bad. Okay. Y'all notice I didn't go crazy with that drill just now? It's because I knew better. I learned a few lessons, guys, in my time as a technician. Not even airsoft tech, just tech in general. All right, this might be a little challenge for some. It may not be for others. Getting this to stay where you need it. What do you do whenever you put that in and it keeps falling? What, is it, what do you do? What do you do? What do I do? Well, <clears throat> I take my jack. I get it fitted. Make sure it fits in my housing. And then I take it and I use the plug to hold it. What you think of that? And sometimes I even put tape in it. We're going to give it a test first, so no worries, no worries. Zip to de do da day. And yes, there is a wrench for this, but it doesn't have to go crazy tight, so a simple needle nose will work. And if you look at the jack, it is indexed. Index means it's marked. Polar Star, they index them to where it needs to be. So make sure it's indexed and it's, and it's set where it should be. Now it helps if you take this and give it a bend like that to plug it in. And on the jack, you want to go in J2. J2. What's this one right here? The top plug. I ain't gonna lie, sometimes it's easier to plug it in with the Polar Star out. I mean, the trigger board out. I don't know why I said Polar Star. I'm so dummy. Sometimes you're better off whenever you got it out to go ahead and plug this sucker in. Because you don't want to bend these pins, and a lot of folks, young players in particular, will get very excited when they get their first Polar Star. And they'll just rush it and they'll break it. And I'm having a time with this one, the little pegs right in the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and save myself from breaking it, cause I'm human. Nah, just kidding, I'm a robot. I'm a transformer. I'm a transformer from, where are they from? Planet X, Planet R, something like that. So, two little notches on the plug, they go up. I really wish Polar Star would mark their plugs and tell you which plug goes where, because sometimes on the F2, it can be confusing for new people. 
and they might not know where it goes. So, all right, I got that set. Now we're gonna use this to hold that up like I was showing you. And if that don't work, you could always take you a little bit of tape. Let me see if I got some tape right here. She was talking about. Tape? Is there tape anywhere? GG? No, there is no tape around. That's quite all right, mate. There isn't tape. It's going to be... I'm going to tell you what else I can use. What I've used before, and I'll use it again, I'm sure. I'm going to take this guy right here. Take this little piece of foam out of our Max Hop Up. And I don't know why I just broke it like a dummy. This is me. This is me experimenting. I don't know why I do this, y'all, but I constantly experiment with stuff. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, I know. My wife says the same thing. Do you ever just let stuff be? You always gotta put add your little twist to it. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I do. It's just innovative, you know? All right, what do y'all think? A little piece of foam? Huh? I think it looks cool. It's got orange foam inside, man. <laughs> y'all, I get it. I get it. I'm cry, cry. I'm cry, cry. All right, y'all. Black speed trigger. I hope I'm explaining this good as I go, y'all. I try to explain stuff the best way I can, but I'm just an old redneck. I'm just an old redneck, man. I don't know what I'm thinking here. Just an old redneck. We'll move that spring right there. These are the notches I was telling you about. If you look and see, it's higher on one side. So give this a 90 degree bend like that. And it's way easier to plug it in. You just lay it up in there. Take your pick tool or screwdriver and just give it a little help. Blip. Push on one side, push on the other side. Push on one side, push on the other side. Make sure that baby's plugged all the way in. It's more than once I've seen people bring their replica in to me and say, Hey man, I just put my brand new Polestar in and it shot for about an hour and that was it. And it quit shooting. Well, what happened is, is they tried to install the battery or they took the battery out or took the FCU up and changed the settings and guess what? They ripped the plug out of here on accident. So then you gotta go back into the gun and fix the plug. Of course, it's not that big of a deal. It's not hard work or anything like that, but it's irritating. I'm gonna try to leave the safety in for him. I'm not even sure why because it's not functionable. So let's take it out. I was going to leave the safety in as a favor, but it's not even functioning, so we're going to take it out of there. It's going to cause more trouble than it's worth for him. Making sure we got good trigger contact here. Looks like we got about two millimeters of leftover space, so I'm happy with that. Now we're gonna go ahead and drop this top half on. Make sure everything's locked in place. Make sure the gearbox is tight all the way around, no gaps. There's a gap, there's an issue. Now we're gonna drop in just a few screws and we're gonna do a um, electrical check on it and make sure we're getting all of our contacts. FCU. We got our little plug that goes up. The tabs go up to the top and they're going to be tight. And we're going to find this battery. These batteries got to be charged um, before use. Who thinks that's a good sound? I think it's a great sound. Now, I know the first thing y'all are going to say, ooh, that trigger pull. I get it, y'all. 
Um, a lot of people knock me because I don't mess with triggers. I do mess with triggers, but I don't mess with a customer's trigger unless they ask me to. They're going to have to say, hey, buddy, can you do a trigger job for me? Because I'm not just going to tweak on your trigger because we're all different. I like a short trigger pull. Wow, we're 30 minutes in. I better cut this thing on short, huh? I want this to be a full length for y'all, so I'm not cutting anything short. We got a long ways to go, guys. Go to it fires, back it off, have a turn. That's going to give you your most amount of travel and your least amount of error of it breaking. Everybody wants to know, JJ, what do you set your jack to? Well, here's that video y'all been asking for. Out of the box, I go into settings, DP's at 50. That's way too crazy. First, we're going to go all the way up to... It, see what your field limit's at. Ours is at 35, but this is just for video purposes. We're going to go up to 70 rounds. Okay? We're going to check everything. We want to make sure it's on FC F1. That's for the jack. Now, DP50, I'm going to drop that down to about 25. That's your poppet dwell. Now, listen to the difference. You're welcome. That's for your jack now. <laughs> All right, guys. Next part, that speed trigger's not going to fit in here, right? So what do I got to do? Because the front of it's bigger. I got to take my little grinder... And I gotta grind it. Hopefully, I got enough. I don't think this drill will spin fast enough to do it. We're gonna try. I'm gonna get y'all. I'm gonna have to get y'all. Um, here, we'll do it right here. I don't like plastic shavings on my table, but I did that for y'all. Now we're gonna unplug our FCU. We're gonna stick this in here, just like that. We're gonna give it the test. Let's see, hey, we got plenty of room. Look at there, boys and girls, plenty of room. I'm gonna go ahead and put our rear pin in and get our alignment true. It's good to go, okay. I just remembered that I only test fit the the uh, gearbox, so let me go ahead and drop the rest of our screws in there. I hope y'all are enjoying this video, and I hope it's helpful to somebody. Um, if you are enjoying this video and it's helped you in any way, or you have a friend that may help, please share it with them. It helps the channel grow, and share my uh, videos, man. Let's blow me up. <laughs> if I get big, I'm going to take care of y'all. I can promise you, if I ever get big like U.S. Airsoft, I will be giving away guns really. Y'all will reap the benefits. I'm not the type of guy to get stuff and not share it. Trust me. And it's probably about time I've done a giveaway anyway, so y'all look for a giveaway. If y'all ever buy a G&G &G gun and y'all see one of these tickets on here, Scratch that off and submit it online. You can enter to win a free G&G &G replica. And they give away some really dope replicas. All right, y'all. We're going to put our center pin in. When you do a Polar Star, be careful and make sure that your wires are clear when you've knocked this pin back in. I set mine from the beginning, so I don't have to check it. But always make sure that they're out of the way of this pin and this pin. It can cause some serious issues for you. Okay, okay. Next is gonna be this. So this is gonna be a little tricky. Not even gonna lie. Cut.
cutting this little thingy is not fun. Um, making this fit. This just slides in like that, boom, that's all. So that makes it very difficult, y'all. So what has to happen here is this guy has to get cut for one, for two, it has to plug in. So you're gonna have to see, you gotta gauge it is what, what I'm about to tell you. What I usually do is take this I lay it in here the best way I can to fit it. And then I gauge this. You can't really mess up because this is adjustable. But I look right here and I'm like, hmm, that's too deep. So I'm going to cut it about right there. So you're going to cut that about right there where I just had my finger. When I say you can't mess it up, I'm wrong. You can mess it up. You can cut it way too short. You're better off to start long and come back to it. You feel me? You feel me? It must be getting daylight or something. I think I hear birds chirping or something. Birds chirping, kids singing, phone ringing. So, y'all see that? That didn't look bad at all, did it? Problem is, is it was too long. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set this all the way on there, see? There you go. I mean, I could have run it there. Actually, I'm going to run it there. That way, he can cut it shorter if he wants. I'm not the guy who's going to pick your gun set up for you. But, yeah. That'll work. All right. Let's put his screws in. I don't know why I said it like a baby, but... That's just the screws of it. Someday you're a baby. <laughs> Some days you're a dummy like me. Most of the days, that's every day for me. Baby guy. JJ is an idiot. All right, y'all. Don't laugh at me. I'm just a, I'm just a little baby. <laughs> I say we're going pretty good. We're 37 minutes in. Not bad for a Polar Star install, especially with a tutorial because I'm not really tutorialish. Not ticklish either. All right. So, I'm going to put the jam nut on to where it can be locked down wherever he wants it. And what you do is you turn this down until there's tension on the line. And then you simply jam this nut down right here. Flick, like that. And you're in there like swimwear. So that'll make it tight and loose. And I got that trigger beaming, y'all. Beaming. All right. What time is it? What time is it? Buffer tube time. So we're gonna drop our sling plate on first because I always forget to put the stupid sling plate on. Now we're gonna take our little buffer tube and drop that baby right there. And we're gonna send it. Now I'm gonna drop out of frame for about half a three second. My drill's making some squeaky squawkies. Okay, my buffer tube ain't going to line up, and y'all want to know why? Because my spring guide got twisted a little bit, apparently. And I probably could have just went ahead and just sent it on home, but I'd rather look at it. No, spring guide's perfect. Huh. Zhajar, what are you doing here, boy? So... I would like to do a giveaway, and I'd like to get some ideas for such giveaway. Let me get y'all down here in frame for a minute, so y'all can see what I'm doing. So, what ideas do you guys have for a giveaway? Tell me, and I'm open for anything, really. 
I don't even care. Y'all want AEG? Y'all want pistol? Some people like high capas. Y'all like polar stars? I don't think I've done a full polar star giveaway before. This baby is ready to rock and roll, y'all. I'm fixing to drop this thing into nuke land. Let me show y'all this trigger pull. I like it. All right, let me get y'all back in frame. Let's move some of this junk off the table. Well, we're not gonna need for a minute. And let's finish this beautiful install. Next is our mag release. To be able to release those mags. And our screw. And we need the small baby Allen, what I had earlier, which has just totally disappeared on me somehow. Drop in the comments what kind of giveaway y'all like. I don't want to change the subject. I want to stay on that subject because I want to know. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Guess what, y'all? Pretty sure we got the settings where I would run them. So I'm sure he will like them. Or she. I don't even know if it's a he or she. So now we're going to tuck all of our goodies up in here. Just gently. Can y'all see that? I don't know if you can or you can't. But I kind of tuck everything into a ball. Like that. And I take the stock, slide it there. I like it, I like it, I like it. All right, we're gonna set this to the side. Now we're gonna work on our barrel assembly. So we're gonna take our upper, take out this bad boy. I like the brass barrels myself. They they seem to, how can I say this without saying anything bad about the aluminum ones? Oh, well, I don't care. The aluminum ones flex. The aluminum ones are not consistent as a brass barrel. So I like the brass barrels. And the only thing we need out of here is the brass. I mean, is the aluminum barrel. So everything else can stay Right there, because we're getting the maple leaf. I believe this was a 70 degree bucking. Sometimes you will have to make sure your bucking gets perfect where the little nub is. <laughs> I'm gonna take that off. We're not gonna need that. We're not gonna need that. We're not gonna need that. All right, now I'm gonna dump out our Max, our little Max baby. And let's see what kind of. We have no nub in there at all. So, let me get out the Phillips here so we can work on this. Did I say Phillips? Because I meant the head. Y'all got a full length video out of me. I'm proud. I've been wanting to do them so bad. I've been trying to get back into doing my full length videos. It's just so hard with work and everything. But just know YouTube is my passion. I love making videos for y'all. I love the comments and communicating with you guys and girls. I love it. I absolutely love it. So if you got questions, feel free to ask anything. I promise you, I don't mind. I will talk to you 24 seven. It doesn't matter. We will just talk, talk, talk. Airsoft is the way. You think as many of these max hop ups I put together, it'd be a little faster at it, wouldn't you? Okay, take the arm off. Now we're gonna check this. So it looks like they had it set for the flat hop which is fine 
There is a R hop, I think. That is an R hop. It's got the oval. R hop is what that is. I think. Don't quote me. I'm not a master of hop ups yet. I'm working on that. I think hop up is more of a research and development type thing. Everybody that I know is not perfect at hop ups. They have to work at it like I do. It's like you're experimenting. You're always experimenting. There's not two barrel assemblies that are alike. <clears throat> you always are trying to find a way to innovate and to make it better. And do, you can make your own hop up up, honestly. You can use a piece of rubber and make your own nub. You can make a flat nub. You can make a round nub. You can make uh, patches. You can make hop up patches out of surgical tubing. There's so much hop up. Making hop up is a whole different video and is a whole different art in the tech game. The guys that are good at hop up making are awesome. They're making guns do things that you wouldn't believe. So I'm not going to claim to be a hop up master because I am not. I learn every time I touch a hop up. As you can see right now, I'm getting beat up by a old maxi boy. I'm trying to get the spring in without dropping it. It's a little temperamental. I'll write it in. I think I got it this time. 15th times the charm, right? And I'm wrong. <laughs> The 50th time is a charm. I thought I had it in its little groove and it fell out. All right, 50 times, once, twice, 50 times, he's a lady. Something like that. I heard that song. Once, twice, three times a lady. I don't even know what I just said. Please don't make fun of me. All right, you done, matey. I'm a pirate. I'm just a pirate, yeah. Now we're going to roll it back to zero. And we're going to roll it back up to 100. Roll it back to zero. Make sure it's functioning like proper butter. And we're going to put our cut line to the bottom. If you have a problem getting that in, you need to put a little grease on the outside of the bucking. And I see something on this bucking that I don't like. It looks like a little miss. Something to do when they made it. It's a tiny little bit of rubber hanging over. I got it there. I fixed it. Ripped it right off of there. Now, we just got a good seat right there. I felt that. Now, you're going to give it a hard press. That is properly installed. Okay? So, don't you muck fun of me, boys. Don't you muck fun of me, boys. And girls. You muck fun of me. You make fun of me? Huh? You want to make a fun on me? Then I will make a fun on you. There you go. That's a perfectly built barrel. Now, I know you guys want to see this fun part here. This is why I got this. I didn't get this for no other reason but for barrel assemblies. And here's why. We just built this barrel. We want to know, is it working? Is the hop-up working? You could put a hop-up together. That doesn't mean the hop-up is actually applying any kind of pressure into the barrel assembly, can, is there? There's only one way to tell. Either shoot it, put it all together and shoot it, or you could stick this down the barrel and you can look at it. So we're going to go all the way in till we get to the hop, which is right there. Let me zoom y'all in. On the camera. Right there. There's our hop right there. Let me see if I can get some good view of it. Right there. So this is the top of the hop. Now we're going to turn it. As you can see, look how much we're getting down into there. Isn't that crazy, y'all? So we're going to actually set this. I could set your barrel and build your barrel 
and ship it to you without even putting it in and testing it. So I'm setting it right there. So he's getting the slightest amount of hop. And we're done, y'all. Barrel assemblies built, set, ready to play ball indoor. All right, I'm gonna back it up. I'm gonna drop it into here. It already has a spring on top, so I'm not gonna worry with the big spring. You're gonna make sure that baby goes in and it centers. And we're gonna go ahead and install it on this bad boy. And I'm sure y'all wanna hear this thing go rat tat 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 one time, don't you? Me too. We'll start by getting the stupid pin to move. All right, y'all. We're going to slide the upper on. I don't know if y'all noticed how I just give it a little twist there. That's kind of the critical twist. I'm just going to give y'all a tip here. And I learned this the hard way. If you're putting an upper on and you can't put that pin in, simply, there's a problem. That pin... That front pin should go in with ease. Let me grab, 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 grab the uh, hose here. I know there's a hose right here. Let's pray we don't got no leakies. Let's take off his cap. Sounds like no leakies. I'm out of air. I'm gonna fill up the air, guys. <sighs> Oh, yeah, I got like 20 pounds. Needless to say, it's a success. Uh, it's a success. <laughs> and we're fixing to do an outdoor shooting video just for you guys. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video and share it. Y'all have a great day. Peace. JJ Moore. All right, I got it done. We got the flashlight, the tracer. We got the Polar Star Jack, the grip, the Max Hop Up. Let's see if I can get that open for y'all. Ah. Sorry, Max Hop Up. Got it set with the camera. Let me put it on semi. Give y'all a few shots so the accuracy is dead on. You set that bucking and hop up with the camera and you're on the money.